but thank um, you for coming today it's just you know continuing transition my name is Jessica Scoville I'm the assistant director here okay. at the historical society and uh, just a couple of things I'd like to remind you before we get started if you haven't already there are refreshments in the back be sure to get some and if you didn't sign in when you came in please sign the book on the way out we just kind of keep track of I'll go over here. And where they come from. <laughs> and next week, our presentation is going to be Tom Gallagher talking about the Portland Community Foundation. But without further ado, I'm going to introduce Jessica Sloma. Did I say right? You did? Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Okay, thank you for coming, Jessica. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. So, my name is Jessica Sloma. I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing at Great Peak Mountain Resort. Everybody familiar with Greek Peak? 60 yeah. years. <laughs> so yes, this year we're celebrating our 60th anniversary um, from the ski area, which is really exciting. Has everybody partaked in any of the activities at Greek Peak over the 60 years? Been to the bar once. <laughs> <laughs> very important. That's, very, that's a big part. <laughs> the outreach, right? <laughs> the first day was open. Wow. The first, so in 1958 it opened. Actually, I was, we skied the 57 the year before. You did? Before it opened. Yeah. You hiked it? We hiked it. Yeah. Illegally? My kids have been on a um, close trail a time or two, and most times now it's with the owners, so they're sure. not a good influence sometimes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I've worked with Greek Peak um, with the original owners back when there were just footers in the um, to build the hotel, which was really exciting. They hired um, our advertising agency out of Syracuse to rebrand Greek Peak at the time. It was um, 08, 07, 08 ish. And um, so have definitely seen some of the evolutions. Um, You've seen a few more than I have. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to hit on a couple of dates um, that were really important to Greek Peak. So in 1958, they opened the, the resort with the governor at the time doing a ribbon cutting, which was exciting. In um, the 1960, they brought the two uh, tea bars to Greek Peak. In 63, they brought the first chairlift to central New York was exciting. In the 70s they did some freestyle competitions and they also started their um, adaptive program for um, skiers with disabilities and that has it's an award-winning program today and it has evolved. Um, they work with a lot of veterans today um, and um, it, it's very impressive so Greek Peak's a great mountain to to have that too because the slope the terrain is very progressive, so they can um, kind of gradually learn. Um, and then fast forward, 1998, Hope Lake Lodge or Hope Lake Park um, opened, and Greek Peak manages that for the town of Virgil, and they still ma we still manage that today. Um, December 09 is where I came into play with with Greek Peak, and that was the opening of. Hope Lake Lodge and Indoor Water Park. Everybody familiar with the, the Indoor Water Park? Mm -hmm. And um, beautiful international spa within the lodge. Um, and you know, the water park was, that's, it was the only water park at the time in this area. Now um, we compete with bigger, newer coming online. So it, it's an uh, interesting, um, way to try to market and find Greek Peaks niche which is smaller families, younger families. Um, but we are competing with the Kalahari's down in the Poconos and Great Wolf Lodge and Camelback which so our water park is 41,000 square feet and um, the, the ones that came online in the last two or three years are 125,000 square feet of indoor <laughs> water park. So there's a big difference, so we had to really find where where we fit and what we were good at, and that's that young family where you can still relax and moms can see their kids run around and um, not lose them in the water park. Um, since the lodge opened, 
we did receive TripAdvisor's Excellence Award from 2012 to uh, 2018, which we're really proud of. And the Lodge today um, attracts, you know, we, we have, um, I would say, our regional day trippers, and then our destination tr attracts from New York City, Philly, New Jersey. We get a lot of Canada, actually. Uh, the last couple of years, the Canadian spring break in March um, actually did better for our occupancy than the, the uh, regional spring breaks or the U.S. spring, spring break, which was interesting. Um, today we have um, on our off um, season, which is outside of the ski area um, and the operation, we have uh, usually between 200 and 250 uh, employees. And during the ski season, uh, we operate with 600 to 650 employees, uh, which was one of the largest um, in the area. I don't know if this clicker works, but we'll go through some of the um, the slides here. <laughs> I can always fast forward it there too. So yeah, today uh, we have 55 trails um, and that has grown um, and in, in large part most recently what we did was we incorporated about 16 of our downhill mountain bike trails that we invested over the last few years and opened those up to, to downhill um, glades for terrain parks. Um, the summit is 2,100 feet. The vertical drop is 952, 152. We also labeled a Greek peak wine this year, a red and a white, and um, the, the red is called 952 for our vertical drop. Thank you. So we're always looking at ways to evolve and stay relevant. And we brought, several years ago, we brought this uh, jump bag, um, and we call it the Peak Plunge. It's a 50 by 50 foot airbag. And what we do, what it is meant to do, and it, and it has evolved, that brand has evolved over the years, is a winter um, attraction, but also a training attraction. So skiers and riders can practice their freestyle jumps and tricks and safely learn, land on this airbag. Um, this is my little guy a couple years ago. Um, but <clears throat> then we said, well, we're switching our um, downhill operation. What we do in the, the spring is we switch over the um, trails to downhill lift access. And what are we going to do with this bag? So when the Adventure Center opened in 2011, we're looking for different amenities. And we bring this bag over to the Adventure Center, and there are two free fall platform jumps. One is 10 foot, and one is 33 feet. And you take, a, on the 33 feet, you do a little bit of ground schooling, and you take a rope, uh, a zip line over to it, and then you can do, like this guy's doing, a free fall jump into the bag. So, always looking at new adventurous things to do at the mountain. Snow tubing is also at the Adventure Center. So we have, um, it, in its peak, we have about 20 lanes of tubing. We do a lot of groups and birthday parties. Um, the Adventure Center also houses our mountain coaster, which Tabitha is, is going to go on at some point, but her kids enjoy. Um, the mountain coaster is pretty neat. Is anybody familiar with the, a mountain coaster? So you basically go up the mountain, um, it's sort of like a roller coaster, it's on tracks and you're in a cart and you glide down at your own speed. So you control the speed by the braking and you can't go off the tracks, it's German technology, um, so the, um, it's wrapped around the, the cords and stuff, it's pretty neat. So you can glide through the mountain down to the bottom, it's, it's neat. Um, the, the ropes course, which we do a lot of team building, and the ropes course is based on um, the green, blue, and black, like our uh, trail system. So um, easy is the green level. There's a middle blue and then a very high black, and um, that's pretty neat. If, if anybody familiar with a ropes course, 
seen it at Destiny has one um, in the mall in Syracuse. Kika College has one. Yep. I did it as part of our freshman orientation. It's challenging. They're very challenging. Yeah. Um, and zip lines. So we have five dual zip lines throughout the mountain at the Adventure Center, which is pretty fun. And of course, tubing is housed there. We talked a little bit about Cascades Indoor Water Park. It's 41,000 square feet. It's year round, 84 degrees. We have, um, it's pretty neat in the winter time. There's an outdoor pool and there's an outdoor hot tub and an indoor hot tub. But to go out, it's got a beautiful view of the mountains, a beautiful view of the lodge. It's 84 degrees and it could be snowing on you. So it's, it's pretty pic picturesque. Um, wave pool, kids activities. Um, so that is fun and we're, we're looking at the next step of expanding that a little bit. So our water park kind of tops out at 10 or 12, age 10, 12, 13, if you haven't been there, but it's definitely geared a little younger. So looking at different activities to bring into the, the water park, like a flow rider, which is a um, surf and kneeboard simulator. So some fun things like that to still stay relevant in the market. Waterfall Spa is an international spa. Um, has anybody gone to the spa? It's beautiful. Um, full service spa and salon within the lodge. We talked about the Adventure Center. So that is the mountain coaster there. And if you have a little guy or girl, you can put them in front of you so it seats two, two people. There's one element of our ropes course there and our zip line. So downhill mountain biking, we started about three years ago. And again, always looking at ways to really enhance that Four Seasons experience at Great Peak, not just a ski resort. So we started looking at the trail system and, and we built it organically, basically over the last few years. Last year was a big push with more trails. It's only open on Sundays and Saturdays, and it's lift access. So you take the quad chairlift up to the mountain, they attach their bikes on to the quad, and then they ride the trail system down. And it can be anywhere from a cross country or a green trail to a double black diamond. And, and there, I, most of the, you can see, here, back here, he's got his helmet on top, but they're basically wearing full gear. Um, so it gets pretty steep and very narrow. Would so they let you ride up to? <laughs> yes, yes. So we do have chairlift rides. <laughs> but we do, joking aside, we do have um, chairlift rides on Saturday and Sunday where you can go all the way around, or you can get off and walk around and get back on the chairlift. But. Um, yeah, so that, that's pretty neat. I'd want to ride up. Ride up yeah. on your bike? Yeah. There's spaces. Okay. We can talk. We can, we can get <laughs> <laughs> So groups and conferences have really expanded over the last three years. Um, weddings basically have tripled over the last year, um, or actually last three years, doubled year over year. So last year we did about 30 weddings throughout uh, 2017, and this year we're up to about 65 weddings um, at Greek Peak Mountain Resort. Now, we were, where do they take place? You told me that those people were at the top of the mountain. They get married on the mountain. Uh, some of them, we do some mountaintop weddings. We're actually building, and it's been um, pretty rough up there, but if there's brides that want it at the top of the mountain, especially during um, fall foliage. Uh, but we are building uh, sort of an infinity deck up there. Um, so you can do a mountaintop wedding. Some of the ceremony sites, that's a great question. Um, a lot of brides operationally, um, our jams don't, really like it, but they like the portico. So when you when you pull into the lodge, there's, uh, I don't know if anybody knows, but that area where you pull in under 
um, by the valet. is uh, It's got a beautiful um, look out to the mountain. That's one of the ceremony sites. We, we also, three years ago, brought in, we call it a wedding tent. It's actually a, a three seasons structure. It's beautiful with panorama views um, just to the side of the lodge. Um, and that's a great, so it's got a wood floor, lots of drapery. Um, and they do some, some in the lobby here, the ceremony. And then our conference center, Acropolis, is one of the larger um, wedding venues. I think we've done seated about 275, which is a very large wedding. Multiple dining um, options at Greek Peak, Acorn Grills. We have a couple Starbucks on property. Tracks Pub and Grill was built after the new ownership um, in 2013. And they also built, has anybody seen the deck at the base of the mountain? It's 6,000 square feet of deck. It's beautiful. It's two tier. It has a fire pit and a fireplace on the deck. Some of the weddings and um, events happen on that deck. Um, and it's right on the base of the mountain. It's beautiful. So we take advantage of that with some, we do a annual event called Hops and Swaps. It's in conjunction with the, the ski club and they do their swap sale for, for their ski inventory. And we bring a lot of different beer and wine vendors on the deck and have a big party, so that's fun. And there's a couple pictures of the deck. Is your restaurant open to the public um, during the year, rest of the summer? Yes. So um, Acorn is, oh, everything is open to the public. Um, Acorn is the restaurant that is within the, the lodge and the lobby area. It's open seven days a week. And Trax is open seven days a week in season during ski season. And then from now, with basically Mother's Day until October, it's uh, Friday, Saturday, Sundays. They do a beautiful brunch on the weekends at Trax. So, and at Trax, you can sit out and, and watch the crazy downhill mountain bikers a lot on the weekends. So, yes, it's, it's definitely open to the public. The water park is open to the public. I think that was a misconception because when, when we first opened uh, the water park, it was you had to be a hotel guest, and that's that was done away with about three years ago, maybe four years ago. But yeah, we do a lot of public days um, with lower price points. Um, a lot of school groups will come in to the water park. Um, so yeah, that was that's a good question. Um, so some of the things that we do to stay relevant in um, this ever-changing landscape, you know, there's a lot of competition out there, um, both ski area and summer for group business. We do compete with a lot of venues in, in Syracuse um, and Binghamton. But a couple of fun things that I thought I would share with you today on what we've done over the last couple of years to, to remain relevant. Um, and battling the changing uh, generation. I know a lot of people talk about millennials and it's gonna, it is the biggest, next biggest generation to boomers and the way that they spend and the way that they buy and attracted to different things is very different. So we've put a lot of research into that so we can tailor our ads and our marketing and our activities to the millennial generation and it's interesting because <clears throat> it's almost like two generations within the millennials because a lot because it's such a wide age range you have young families with children and you have college students within that so it's a little challenging um, to market to but um, but we're doing it and I you know the millennials seem to like it because there's so much activity at Greek Peak there you know one of our taglines over the years is something for everyone so mom can be at the spa with the kids or without the kids there's kid friendly um, products and services or the kids can be in the water park and it's a safe spot 
Um, so the, we do pretty well with the, the millennials. Um, but one of the things that we developed was our seasons passes changed a lot. Millennials aren't as loyal as the previous generations to one brand or product and they, they, their time is valuable. They ski a lot less than, than boomers ski. Um, so we developed a line of um, Seasons Pass products. Is anybody a Seasons Pass? Are you a Seasons Pass holder? Or were you a Seasons Pass holder? Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we, it, there, it's always been the traditional pass out there. Um, and we came up with five different passes that hopefully related to the different demographics. So we came up with an expedition pass. The expedition pass includes your regular seasons pass. It's good for a year, but it also includes your a seasons pass to downhill mountain biking and to the adventure center. So you can use the adventure center, zip lines, mountain coaster as much as you want with that pass. There's, <laughs> wait, there's more. There's a ski and splash pass which is your regular seasons pass and a seasons pass to the water park. There's a night seasons pass, a gladiator pass, which the gladiator pass is your regular seasons pass. And every time you come, you can bring a new friend with you. Um, and then the 25 and under pass. So those, this is the second year out with them, and, and that was um, pretty well received. And then, of course, there's a lot of different perks of becoming a Seasons Pass holder. So that was one big change that we've done over the last couple years to try to stay relevant with the marketplace. Um, the other is we partnered with a company out of New Jersey called Snow Operating. And they partner, they only have about 39 partners worldwide with ski areas. And what was happening over the 60 years of teaching people how to ski, it became very technical and not fun. Um, instructors were more worried about teaching proper turns than the experience. And with the new generation, they want the experience. They want the, the fun selfie and get it on social media. So it was a whole change of the way that you taught and thought from the time they pulled into the parking lot to the flow through rentals, which is really cumbersome and it's not a fun process. So how do you make that, jamming your foot into a, a ski boot, how, do, how can you make that experience a little more tolerable for a never ever skier? Um, so they're, they're a consultant for us and it's been great. So they looked at, um, we did a boot bridge, which you know several resorts do in the rental. So they, they walk over, they, get, they stand up on a bridge, so you're kind of eye level with the tech, and they help you put your boot in. So we were finding, they did research. Some people, it took 20 minutes to figure out how to get the boot on and, and fasten it. So that was really enlightening to us, and we, we made that change. We also transformed the base of our mountain, and it's called terrain-based learning. You're, it's, it's not overcomplicated. You're basically using the terrain and forming the terrain to help teach skiing. So we incorporated many half pipes to get the, the motion, the feel of the back and forth, whether you were on a ski or a board. Um, rollers to help um, the momentum and the feel of, of um, of the, the mountain that way, and S turns. So it, it actually was really well received. This was the first year, and we do a lot of ski programs for um, elementary through high school, and it was very useful for the advisors, and you know, it, great, great feedback from that. Um, we also, since the, the ownership, new ownership in 2013, um, they've invested quite a bit back into the resort. Um, I think the first year was about five and a half million dollars. Um, this past year, they they invested um, a million uh, over eight hundred thousand, and then this year a million dollars into snowmaking. And what happened, just to be frank, is um, they put so much time and effort into all of the other. Um, the hotel and the indoor water park and the adventure center that 
they didn't they didn't put a lot into the the ski resort to keep up with the aging facility so a lot of money has gone back into that into snow making into the pipe and um, guns and um, we're actually looking at um, taking two groomers um, in October we've purchased two groomers in October so putting a lot of money a lot of money back into the the ski side which um, needed the focus so that's exciting um, just to break it down a little bit for this year 2018-19 season um, two new um, piston bully groomers an apart machine, um, additional <clears throat> fan guns, tower guns, snow guns, and booster pumps. So just they they've replaced about 750 feet of old pipe, and that's probably been around for 50 years or so. So just working on the infrastructure a lot this year. Um, Greek Peak also has. Uh, the second, this was the second year, two years ago, we were lucky enough to be approached by the Spartan Race, which is a, an adventure race, international adventure race. At the time, they were partnered with Reebok. And um, they wanted to bring the first winter race in the United States to Greek Peak. And so it was, we got it. It was the first race in the United States in the winter. But we also um, added a little monkey wrench to it too while operating a ski resort. So Spartan, um, they brought just shy of 4,000 racers to the mountain. They took over two of our trails and the Adventure Center and people came from all over the world. So they came back last year uh, for a second year and I think the furthest that I had talked to somebody it was Switzerland, France, they come from all over. It's great exposure for Cortland. I think we ended up filling the hotels in Cortland and the um, restaurants. So I also sit on the, the um, Convention and Visitors Bureau and they, they, were, they always want Spartan to come back. So it was a, um, pretty heavy on our operations, but um, well worth it. They, the, the team stays with us for about 16 days pre and post event and they've got it down pretty turnkey so they they do all of the obstacles it's about um three and a half miles long is the course and within those three and a half miles on our property they set up about 23 obstacles um, within that so it's pretty grueling and then to do it when it's um the first year it was 60 degrees two days prior to the race and then we had that really weird snowstorm and I think it was negative two degrees um, and they ran in that and then this year was like the perfect winter race because um, we got that snowstorm but it was beautiful snow <laughs> it was like a snow globe so um, that was really exciting for I think for Greek Peak but for Cortland County as well to really showcase and, and bring people from all over the world to, to see and experience Cortland um and we talked about the um conferences groups and weddings so i have a team of four sales managers that have a pretty big territory from um new jersey pennsylvania new york city up through central new york southern tier and then into canada and um they they go after uh, groups and conferences and that's a big part of Greek Peak. Um, it's not 50-50 yet with groups and leisure, but it's heading that way. Um, and it's, it's, it's been great for us. So it's kind of a fun, um, centrally located um, area for a lot of associations too. So um, that's been fun. And then um, just to mention, we also are owners in 2005 also bought Toggenberg Mountain um, just outside of Syracuse. So we also manage Toggenberg Mountain, which is seasonal ski area resort. So yeah. Any any questions? That's Greek Peak in a nutshell in 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about um, do you ever have scouting groups come up there for 
any of the adventure stuff because my son is in Scouts and that would be ideal. I don't know if they know what you have to offer. Boy Scouts? Mm -hmm. We do. Um, we, we have had a lot of Boy Scout groups come in and um, one of the owners, there's two owners um, from the Elmira area, is highly involved in Boy Scouts. His son goes through, so I actually have a call at 3.30 with, <laughs> regarding the Boy Scouts. But yes, we do. Boy Scouts, a lot of school groups come through for through the Adventure Center and, and team building. Yeah, I'll have to put it in there here. Oh, please do. They actually, um, the, I, I don't know which um, scout group, but one of them comes back year after year and they, they stay in the original A-frame um, overnight. They just like camp out there and um, it's kind of a neat experience. And then the ones that want to ski, they ski in and ski out of the um, A-frame up there. So, yeah. Okay. yeah, my son's group goes to Albany to an indoor rock climbing gym, but this sounds like it could be just as much fun as yes. right here. Yeah. So. Yep. And so the Adventure Center has really great facilitators that work from, like I said, elementary school, middle school, up through college. But also we've worked with the Wounded Warrior Project. So there was a pocket out of New York City that um, I was affiliated with and they came up and they actually went through the course to make sure that we could accommodate um, amputees and, and different disabilities. Which we and we cater and will um, customize the whatever we are doing as far as team building. Too. That's good. Mm -hmm. Do you have cross country uh, trails or groomed trails up top, or is they still across the road, or where, where what's the situation? Yep, there? they're still at the Nordic Center um, at Hope Lake Park, but we manage it for the for the town. So it is, it is groomed and they usually have um, a t an attendant in the hut there at the end of the season. It's kind of the honor system. But yeah, beautiful trails. Nothing, no cross country skiing on, on the on ski top. side. Okay. Yeah. Lake is repaired. There's articles on the damage there. Yeah, we had quite a flood last year. Um, and it was I was actually trapped between, on Clute Road between the park and um, Greek Peak at the time. It was just flowing water through. Um, they're going, they're looking at cleaning it up this year. The, you were the trapped there? I was trapped. <laughs> and then it just, then I came back and um, usually the base area has gotten flooded in the past because of the creek, but it was, it came from 392 and it, it took out all of the base area, about a foot of water throughout from start to finish. <coughs> so we had a fun, that was July last year. Mm -hmm. yeah. July 2nd or 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Okay.